Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video, what I'm going to be doing is running down 10 of the KDE widgets that I think anybody can benefit from using. KDE is one of my favorite desktop environments with all the customizations, themes, everything that you could do with it, and just the overall functionality of the system. And widgets is one of those things in KDE that I use every day. So this, after using it for about three months or so, is gonna be my list of the widgets I think you should check out. So just as a note, some of these widgets may already be pre-installed in your KDE system. So it's just a matter of searching for them and adding them to either a panel, desktop, or wherever you prefer. But some of them you will have to go download, so there will be information on that down in the description below. So the first widget that is an absolute must have for me is this individual core uses widget that I have down here on my panel. Now this is very, very helpful. It allows me to monitor my CPU performance, well my CPU utilization by the core. And this is really important, especially if I've been using the computer for a while, I've been doing a lot of video rendering. After a while, this kind of rides high, so it's good to monitor this and just it's nice to have this as a visual representation of what's going on with your CPU. Then if you go over here, you have your memory usage, and this is just kind of a little pie chart of how much RAM in your system is being used. You can see I have 32 gigabytes of RAM available, and I'm using just under half of that. So my RAM utilization is pretty high right now, but I have a lot of things going on in the background, so that makes sense. And then the third widget that kind of falls under the system monitoring category is a uh, temperature monitoring. So I'm actually going to download that real quick just so I can kind of show you the process of that. So to get a widget, you just click add widget. You come over here and then you click on get new widget. And then we're going to go ahead and download a new plasma widget. And here, if I just go ahead and type in something like temp, it will bring up widgets that involve temp. And the one I'm talking about right here is the thermal monitor. If you wanted more details, you go ahead and click on that and it'll open that up in the web browser. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and install it. These are very, very small files, so they only take a sec. And then once that's all done, I could go ahead and close this out, right click again, click on add widgets. And then here I will be able to see the thermal monitor. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that and drop that right next to this graph where I monitor my individual core usage. And then this right here, we're gonna to need to configure this. So right click, configure thermal monitor. And here we are going to go ahead and add a new source. And then we're gonna go ahead and change this to uh, the T die, which is a pretty accurate representation of your CPU. I'm gonna go CPU alias and go CPU temp. Actually, I'll just keep it as CPU and then OK. If you want to as well, you could go ahead and have some more setting changes. You could change the appearance. Actually, first I need to apply this. So you could go ahead and change the appearance, adjust these as you want. Under here, you can change it to Fahrenheit, uh, Kelvin, Celsius. But I'm going to go ahead and keep it as Celsius as that is pretty standard for monitoring CPU temperatures. Uh, under appearance, you can see right there, it is now reading. So it says 68, I could always make the uh, temperature font size a little bit bigger. Hit apply and you can see how that got bigger there. I like to keep that next to this core uh, usage monitor just so I know the two and two go with each other. And we're gonna go ahead and click okay to close that out. And those are the first three widgets. So the next one we're going to be going over is the Win7 volume control. So if I click right here, this is what it looks like by default. You have your devices here, your application control here. It's pretty nice, but Windows 7 just did it right when it comes to how they have this all laid out. You can see my recording applications, my microphones and my speakers, and overall it just looks a lot better. It's a lot cleaner has the option to pin it if you need to keep it open while you're doing audio editing or anything like that. It's just beautiful how it works. You click these to mute it. I do prefer it a lot compared to this, even though this is nice because then you have shortcuts to some of your plasma uh, audio settings, but it's all a matter of preference. Next on our list, we have Color Picker. It is this little tool right here. It is a simple color picker eyedropper tool. So you could go ahead and click on this and then click on any pixel 
So let's say we wanted this neon green up here. Click on that and you can see that this changes. So I go ahead and click right here. And this is all the different colors that I color picked earlier. So it kind of saves a log of all the different colors, especially if you use a lot over and over again. You go ahead and get color codes from here that you can then use in various photo editing applications. And one thing that's nice about it is if you click on it, you can copy a wide variety of codes and formats. So you have RGB, here you have um, with hashtag without all caps. So whatever you need, it's going to have a quick, easy way to copy that available for you. And now the next application is going to be the sticky note application. Now I went ahead and put one here, and I also put a option down here on the panel. So if I go ahead and click on this one, you can see it brings up a massive sticky note where I can go ahead and write things. And generally that stays there and you can refer back to it at any time. It's really good for easy note taking or just writing down things that you need to on the fly, copying, pasting links. I use this a lot when I'm uh, writing articles on TechHut.tv when it comes to putting in commands, organizing them, things like that. Also, the main purpose, well, the main utilization for this is to have an actual sticky note on your desktop, which you can see right here, and you can remove the sticky note if you'd like to. If we go down here and we click on Edit Panel, we can actually edit this however we want. We could make this a huge sticky note, cover, go down at the side of your page, or just a little tiny thing up at the top that you can go ahead and put little tiny notes in as you see fit. If you get out of this and you do delete the sticky note, it will completely remove it and it said the widget was removed. Next up might be my favorite widget and that is Event Calendar. What it will do is completely replace this little clock utility right here, but it is much more than that. If I go ahead and click on it, you can see it adds a wide array of features to this little calendar utility. Uh, before, it would just show this little calendar and some tasks that you have lined up, but now you have a full list and schedule here aligned with uh, daily weather. Right here you have your hourly weather so you can see exactly what's going to be going on throughout the day. It has a little stopwatch functionality right here, and if I go ahead and click I can go to all the days really easily. And this isn't just it, there's actually a lot more to it. So if I go ahead, right click anywhere, and go to configure event calendar, you can see how much options we have. There's a quite a lot to configure, so I'm not gonna be able to go through everything, but just some of them to touch on is clock formatting. You can completely change how this looks. So you could change the formatting, the boldness, the color. Uh, you go through some presets, you have mouse wheel control, if I go under the layout, you can actually change the size of the sections. So this is a section, this is a section, this is and this is, and you could change those as need be, or even change it to a single column if you'd like to. You have time zone options, some additional calendar options, including stylizing it, your agenda options and how that will display, your event options, so you can uh, have extra Plasma Calendar plugins and notifications, you have options to sync your Google Calendar here and add tasks and other calendars. You have your weather settings here. You go ahead and customize this as you want and change all the coloring for this as well. You can set up to view astronomical event date reminders and then select what region you want to pull for holidays. So compared to how it is set up at default, this is absolutely feature rich and I would recommend it to just about anybody. And another little widget that's actually usually enabled by default on most KDE systems is this little clipboard utility. If I go ahead and click on this, you can see all the history of everything in my clipboard. Right now it's mostly videos, but there's a couple text here and there. But there's actually a lot that you could do with this little application that you might not have thought you could do. So for example, I have this little string of code. This is actually the weather ID for my area for event calendar. Uh, you can do stuff with this so you can recopy it if you'd like to. You can invoke an action. Right here, this is pretty cool. You can show barcode. So for this code, if I click this, I actually generate a QR code. So not only is this a little clipboard bin, you can actually use it to generate QR codes for website URLs or whatever you want. 
You have an option to edit the content, so that'll actually bring up a little text box so you can edit things within your own clipboard. And you can delete them if you see fit. So for example, let's say I wanted to delete all these videos from my clipboard, then I would only have this. And like I said, this is usually enabled and actually on the panel by default, but I really recommend you start using it. It's pretty cool, and it is nice to go through your clipboard history and find and codes that you copied from your session. Next on our list is actually kind of the start menu replacement. You can see this is my original one here. I actually like this better for the desktop, but what I'm going to show you is what I prefer on a laptop. So this is the U Launcher Plasma. You can see here it kind of is a GNOME style uh, application launcher that you can scroll through. It has a little search functionality, but it's really, really nice if, for example, like I do on a laptop or if you just prefer this style. So you could go ahead and completely replace your launcher with this, or you can kind of hide this icon and set it up as a hotkey. So you can use this as your main, but then kind of have a hotkey to go ahead and open this up. And some of the configuration, if I go to configure launchpad plasma, you can change some of the settings. So let's say I wanted to double the size of the icons. So I could go ahead and do that or almost double. There we go, that's double change some of the space between and change the space between the rows. You can set up custom grids and then keyboard shortcuts, but I need to apply these first. So you can set keyboard shortcuts here to launch it with a hotkey. So if I hit OK and I open it back up, you can see that the icons are much larger and I could go ahead and cycle through and open up applications as I choose. For example, Dolphin My File Manager, click that and it opens right on up. So the very last one that I'm going to be talking about today is KDE Connect. I would highly recommend everybody use KDE Connect. It is a great application to connect to your uh, smartphones. And with this, you are able to see your text messages, transfer files, and do a lot of things with it. You can see my OnePlus 7T is connected. If I go ahead and click on this little menu here, I can share files to my phone ring my phone to find it, browse the device, and see my SMS messages. If I click browse this device, you can see I have a couple folders set up, such as my pictures, downloads, and root. But I will be going into this later in a later tutorial, so subscribe to make sure you watch that. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is by far not all of the good widgets that you could go ahead and install. Please leave a comment down below with what are your favorite widgets if I didn't mention them in this video. And like I said, I've only been using this system for a couple months, so as time goes on, I'll discover new ones. Some of these I won't use anymore, and I may have an updated video in the future. But for now, I suggest these ones. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up. If you don't, you know what to do. Subscribe for more content like this. Have a great day, and goodbye.